Hey everyone, my name is Gunther and welcome back to Ottawa Zoo. Today we finish the rebuild of Arctic Point with a brand new Arctic Wolf habitat. Now as always, if you like the content, or if maybe you learned something new, feel free to leave a comment or subscribe, but I do want you to remember there's no pressure to do so. Now as with almost all of our builds, I started with some pretty aggressive terraforming. The goal was really to emulate our Timberwolf Firewatch and create a sunken habitat for our wolves, and really for the first time, for me anyway, I've added in some viewing domes as well. I know it may not be as realistic, but this is all in an effort to learn new techniques and try new styles. Now, speaking of styles, I've opted to try a script for this episode, and I would love your feedback on the content. Do you like this style, or did you prefer the off-the-cuff style instead? Let me know and help shape the channel in the future. For today, I also wanted to explore a new style with a more modern approach to the build, and really all this means is creating a concrete wall that extends down into the habitat. This gives us a smooth wall to work with, and it's pretty well hidden from most of our guest views. Now, speaking of guest views, it's time to set up a new custom barrier. This was achieved by using mostly pieces from the Arctic Pack, and this type of challenge actually helps me to use pieces in a whole new way, and you'll really see this show in the staff building we placed at the end. For our new barrier, I used our decorated posts, added in glass panel with metal banding to act as the base, and then topped it off with a thin planet zoo plank. With this setup, I ran the barriers all the way down our new habitat wall and moved on to our next step of the build. I really envisioned this huge rock cliff wall as the backdrop for our new habitat. Now, thankfully, I already had a working rock wall from our timber wolf habitat ready to go, which is weirdly poetic as we are using it for another wolf habitat. I will note I only had two pieces to work with, so to help add some variation, I broke one of the pieces into a smaller group. This not only helped to add some more variety, it also helped to make this build a whole lot easier. With the initial rocks placed, I went back in and used the terrain pull tool to bring through some additional terrain and then painted it rough rock. And this helped to add some more natural sloping and with some strategically deleted pieces of rock, I had the start of a working backdrop. Now to tie this entire rock wall together, I also added in a three tier waterfall using the pre-made waterfall pieces stacked and offset all the way up. I've also carved out some areas on the top of the habitat for a future build. I'm thinking this will eventually turn into a viewing station for the entire zoo, being high enough that we should have some great sight lines to the other habitats. That being said, my plans for Ottawa Zoo have gone out the window, so your suggestions are not only welcome, I actually encourage it. Let me know what you would put up here in the comments below. Now, very similar to our last Arctic Point build, the Arctic Fox, we have a build that may not quite fit the Arctic Wolf's natural habitat. But we have to keep in mind that it's not really realistic to have snow in an outdoor setting where the rest of our zoo wouldn't. So instead, I decided to focus on creating something that we might see in northern Canada. And this jives with their normal habitat. Arctic wolves, which are actually a subspecies of gray wolves, mostly inhabit Arctic regions. These include Greenland, Alaska, Siberia, and of course, my home country of Canada. They are well adapted to the extreme cold and hard conditions of the Arctic tundra which seeing as we're in franchise mode does mean I had to go back and place some coolers in the area. It looks like we might be a tad too warm for them on occasion. Now you may have noticed I've opted to build our habitat quite long. I designed this intentionally to give some ample room for our new pack of wolves to run and explore. Again, franchise mode does mean that we need to keep the size of the habitat in mind when building. The last step of this section is to add in the foliage for the area. For the cliff face, I took quite a bit of inspiration from Tunnel Mountain in Banff, Alberta. This summer while on vacation, I had the opportunity to hike to the top, and the one thing that really stuck with me besides that amazing view was how trees always manage to find a way to grow on the cliff face. So I used quite a few spruce and Douglas fir trees mixed in with various diamond leaf willow, manzanita, and crowberry bushes to finish off our iconic feature for this habitat. Now for the rest of the habitat, I followed my usual process, starting with buffalo grass in most of the green areas, more of those bushes from the cliff face, and finally quite a few trees before I called this outdoor section complete. The rest of the speed build will focus on our hard shelter and staff area for our new habitat. I am going to apologize in advance as some of the camera work gets a little weird, which is a normal theme when building indoor areas. Now this is gonna be my third attempt at creating this building, and honestly, by this point, as is a reoccurring theme with the series, I had no plan. Now, that's not to say I didn't have a plan. I just didn't like the way it looked. I often tell people to layer on top of your build and it'll come together. <laughs> Boy, was I ever happy when I restarted and created this rather awesome looking structure. I started with our floor plan. I was going for an L-shaped structure that would house our keeper's hut, the entrance to our domes, and the hard shelter for our wolves. 
Now, the downside of not having a plan is that you tend to build a bit slower, and I think this is a perfect example of what this means. I started with our dry sewn base, and I did have to go back through and readjust some of our placement to allow for an entrance to the heart shelter, which is slowly taking shape on the left side of the building. With that out of the way, I turned to some Arctic wood pieces and capped everything off with uh, some Arctic wood beams. This helped to hide the lines where our two pieces met up and started work on our second floor. Now, a lot of the finished build took inspiration from some architectural photos of what I like to think was a Norwegian house. So using that photo as a frame of reference for our second floor, I started by pushing each side in by two meters. Now you don't see the full build of this as it was a little manic. Uh, again, the downside of not really having a plan. I will note as well, I did need to go back through and readjust quite a few walls to make this work. But once finished, I had this rather rough and plain looking house to work with. Now to help liven the build up a little bit more, I made some additions that really helped the building to look a tad more inviting. First up was a porch for our building, and I started with a decorative wood post base and then added a 4 meter decorative beam on top. I did get this little lip between the base and the post, but I actually liked the way it turned out. I then used some of the pre-made fence pieces to add in some additional details. Now as the porch was not in the original design or thought process, I had to go back through and readjust the slate roof, pushing it out a further 2 meters to finish the porch. Thankfully this helped to clear up some clipping that had already occurred, so a happy coincidence all around. I ended up liking this porch so much that I also decided to extend it down the left side of the building as well. With this completed, I could start to see the build coming together and taking shape. With our ground floor exterior completed, I moved on to the second floor. I started off with some arctic roof caps, and it really shows how you can use different building pieces in unique ways to create something that's really amazing. Now with a second cap placed on the right side wall, everything was really starting to take shape. Now that I discovered the tower cap, I went back in and added two additional door canopies alongside the tower caps. This helped to fill in the space and add some additional dimension to the build. I finished the section off by using an arctic door to create a large, more fitting window. With this down, I largely called the exterior complete. Moving to the interior of our build, I found that this is where a lot of my time was spent. To prepare, I had previously placed walls sectioning off a hallway to the habitat entrance, our hard shelter, and finally a supply and prep room for our staff to use. Starting with the hard shelter, I used the blueprint for the backstage fence that I had created for the Arctic Fox. I've also included the blueprint link in the description below if you would like to use this for your own zoos. Of course, I did need to rework some of the build to make it fit into this new interior section. Thankfully, I had saved the blueprint as a modular build, allowing for some easier adjustments if someone needed to modify it to fit their own zoo. Once it was in place, all it took was some minor work on some of the smaller mesh sections to create a fence sectioning off the hard shelter of the wolf pack. Now with our fence completed and some bedding placed off camera, I needed to find a way to fill in this rather weird looking cubby. It took a few seconds, but I realized that this would be a perfect place for a table or a work area for the staff to use. So knowing this, I started off with some anchor plates copied across the area to act as the tabletop, and then supported everything with painted metal beams to act as the legs. Lastly, I filled in the space with some empty crates on the top and boxes stored underneath. And with this finish, I felt it used up the space quite well, and acted as a great place for staff to store food crates and other cleaning supplies. With the shelter taken care of, I moved to the prep area. Now, this is mostly for show and there is no access or use for the staff, but internally, I like the idea that it's fully fleshed out. Now, most of this was built using existing blueprints, adjusted and placed along the walls. I started with some of our storage shelves, deleting various props to help add some variety, added in the foliage table, and again, moving some pieces to make it fit with the room. The final blueprint I used was actually provided by a member of our Discord, Ninny and Sparkles, who actually created a few backstage items for me, and to this day, I continue to use them. In this case, I took the fridge with various food items and placed it in the back corner. The last piece here are a set of sinks placed along the wall. Now, I won't take credit for the idea, as I actually saw this in a photo of Caesar Creates Lion Habitat. I started with a plastic tub, colored to be more metal-like, then utilized the painted metal pieces to act as a support for the sink. With the frame in place, I copied the build to create a double sink setup. Then I added a metal tabletop to help bridge the gap, and then a back plate to create a cleaner looking area. All built with the anchor plates to get that smoother finish. Finally, I added in some minor details. Things such as a set of taps, a drain built from the conservation tubes, and of course some different colored water pails. With this build finished, I called the interior of our prep room complete. 
Now I was almost finished with our interior when I watched Sparrow's amazing video on her cold dome and she built these awesome pocket gates. So taking that inspiration, I circled back to our shelter and added in something very similar. This helps to create a more cohesive looking hard shelter for our wolves. And with this complete, I can finally say we're done the interior. To finish off the speed build, I decided to add in a rather large planter box. This helps to mask the curved path and adds a splash of color for our building. Now off camera, I did quite a bit of additional work on our paths in the area. And I really would like to say thanks to Adam Up, who shared a quick tutorial on how to mask all the path edges. I totally recommend you watch his building tutorials if you're just starting out. In my case, I used some moss decals to give the idea that the foliage is growing up and onto our stone pathway. It's a pretty easy way to blend everything in. Now before we dive into the tour of the newest Habitat rebuild, I do want to say thank you so much for all the support and feedback and I really can't wait to continue this series and finish Ottawa Zoo. Now let's dive into that live tour. And just like that, it is time for a live tour of our new and improved habitat. But before we get to that, I just want to kind of shout out this amazing view of uh, our habitat. Now, ignore uh, some of the stuff right there. We're going to fix that eventually. But look at that uh, fire watch tower. And then if we look over, we can kind of see a little bit of our food court. This is a I, I really love this, this view. I, I love I'm going to keep this the way it is right now. That's really cool. But we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about our uh, habitat, our new and improved Arctic wolf habitat, and uh, we have our education board first and foremost. Uh, now, if you feel you've seen this before, that would be correct because we just uh, borrowed it from our reindeer habitat, rebuilt it for our Arctic wolves, uh, and we have uh, added some foliage. Uh, I love these autumn leaves. They work so well and they add a little bit of color, uh, which matches really well with the color scheme from like the new world stuff. Uh, so I love the way they work. I realize there's no trees here that would uh, really have anything to do with that or we, where we would see these lots leaves come from but i uh i don't care i like the way they look <laughs> now near the end of the speed build i was talking a little bit about this uh idea of using um some moss decals or decals depending on how you want to present that um but this is what it looks like and i gotta say it definitely adds a little bit of added realism to the entire build this makes it look like the path is a living breathing path and i want to say a huge shout out to adam up for that amazing tutorial uh that really kind of showed me how to do that of course, some more leaves uh, and one of my smallest uh, yet most favorite pieces here. So I don't want to take any credit for this. I, I built it myself, but I took inspiration uh, from a photo uh, and there's actually a full pack of a bunch of different um, uh, what donation bin covers. Uh, this is made from four pieces, which is uh, it's two metal pieces uh, for from the New World Pack for umbrellas, the planter box and then an African pot. And this looks phenomenal. And I, it made me really kind of play around with a few other things. And uh, I have a few other ideas for more like period pieces for specific areas and stuff like that. But it looks so much better than just seeing that plain old donation bin. Like this looks more realistic. Uh, of course, we have our habitat, which I'm really happy with. Uh, we're, uh, our pack has grown, so I originally started off with four, but in the time that I've uh, been taking to get this all ready, we've, uh, we've uh, grown to five. Um, but I uh, will say, we may have gone a little overboard with how deep we went on this habitat. It's a little too deep, and I, and I realize that, uh, but I'm okay. It's a, a learning experience. And you know what? Somebody said it in a previous video. Maybe we just repurpose this habitat from a, a different animal. Maybe this was originally for the doll sheep, and we're moving the doll sheep to a whole new habitat, and we're putting Arctic wolves here instead, uh, which seems like a very normal process. So I'm okay. I'm going to go with that. Uh, I love this waterfall here, it just looks phenomenal and I uh, am really happy with it. Of course, we have our upper area here that's a little bland, it's a little blank right now. Uh, and I am very much interested in hearing your ideas on what you guys would want to see up there. I'm thinking some kind of boardwalk that would look over the rest of the zoo, uh, maybe like a little overhang uh, into the middle of the habitat and you can kind of kind of make it like it's floating. Speaking of habitat, look, one of our wolves going for a little swim. Oh, poor guy, <laughs> stuck in the, uh, he's stuck in the uh, lily pads. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to ignore that. Um, if you look over here, we've split it up. So we have uh, our foliage island splitting up two paths. And uh, down the second path, we can actually get a back, uh, a rear view of our uh, Arctic uh, fox habitat. And we have a few. There's uh, what looks like 
three and then another one just taking a little nap in their shelter. Uh, I love the Arctic Foxes. I love that build. Uh, and of course, we have uh, even more of Lion's Signs. I love these signs as well. Super easy to utilize. Uh, totally recommend you guys utilize these for your own zoo. Uh, they make it uh, just seem a little bit more uh, busy and uh, more populous. But this is something I'm really proud of, which is our new and improved uh, I want to say visitor center slash uh, staff center for our habitat. And really the reason why I say that is because the entrance to our domes, because we did have to put domes in there, uh, otherwise guests would be very upset with how uh, they can view the Arctic foxes from here. This is the entrance to our domes. I love that we can just incorporate it with uh, buildings like this. It, it's so much better than just seeing a black void uh, leading to some domes. So I think this is a little bit nicer. Admittedly, it's a little unrealistic because they would have to go pretty deep to get to those domes, which are super far down there. Now, before we go take a tour of the inside, uh, I do want to acknowledge this. We just kind of ended it here. Um, and the reason why is because this is the last rebuild for our Arctic Point before we move on to the next two rebuilds. And we really only have two rebuilds left. We have our staff center that we have to rebuild and then we have our grizzly bear. Um, so we are going to eventually come back. We do have to put something here on the other side just to kind of wrap it around, close off Arctic uh, Point. So maybe one or two more animals, maybe a doll sheep. Uh, I don't know. Would love to get your feedback. Uh, let me know what you would like to see go there eventually. Um, it's definitely going to be a little bit further down the road, but we are uh, we, we are getting there. Now, the last thing to tour is the interior of our staff center, uh, and this is our main hallway. Now, ignore the little clipping, uh, just the way the hallway is set up. It's a, it's a weird size, but we have our um, staff bins, which I love the way this looks. Uh, so staff would come in, they would store any of their personal items here. Maybe they want to switch from shoes to boots while they're cleaning out the habitat. And then we have a little whiteboard letting people know of any important details or maybe like a, a shift change or a change in direction when it comes to certain things. Now we have three doors. Uh, one obviously is our keeper hut. Uh, one goes to our hub shelter and one goes to our prep area. So I would envision that if uh, staff were coming here to clean out our habitat, they would come into our prep room and this is where they could like maybe wash their hands if they were a little dirty, uh, but they can also get all of their stuff ready to go and clean up the habitat itself. So we have like a wheelbarrow, we have some spades, some watering cans, uh, a natural uh, like a source of water available to us and a, a shelving unit with a bunch of boxes ready to go. So maybe it's uh, more grass seed or, or what have you. Uh, and then, of course, we have some uh, refuse that has to get thrown out. So we're waiting for maintenance to come for that. And then uh, my favorite piece, because I use this all the time and a huge shout out again to Ninian for the uh, the blueprint. So she made this for me and I really appreciate that so much. Uh, this is our uh, little food fridge. So maybe we would uh, prep food here sometimes as well, or if there was like an overflow, uh, but we can come and store it here in preparation for uh, feeding our uh, pack of wolves. Now, when we go into the hard shelter area, we have our table, which looks really cool. I'm actually really happy with how this turned out. Uh, so, you know, we'd come in here to clean this out, change out the bedding. We would maybe put all the garbage here while we're waiting for maintenance to come pick it up. And then uh, we can also make sure that our uh, our wolf pack is not gonna go and uh, get into all the uh, the garbage bags and stuff like that. Now, this is also from a blueprint, which is just really some crates. Uh, more realistic that we would see Arctic Wolves transported in a crate like this. And even looking at this, I love this little handle that they created. Um, so I, I'm definitely going to pull this apart and figure this out because I love these handles for like the doors that I create. I would love to kind of incorporate them. Uh, additional small pieces from Ninian from that same pack. Uh, I'll use these all the time because it's like pre-built and it's perfect. And then we have our habitat fence or gate, if you will. Uh, I will include the link. I think I mentioned it already. I'm going to include a link to the uh, the workshop page for this. Uh, if you want to use it for your own build, by all means, I love the way this works out, even with like just like the offset uh, gate. So we can slide the gate over when we're trying to come in. Uh, it just looks really cool. I'm really happy with it. Now, I think the best way to add, to end this live tour is a quick tour of our, uh, a quick view of our of our habitat. Uh, of, of course, I think you saw it, it's got, oh, there it is. Uh, we did have to place some coolers because uh, we are a little too warm for them in this environment, which makes sense. They are Arctic wolves. They are called Arctic wolves for a reason. Uh, but this is the uh, my favorite view of the entire habitat. Just sitting here and looking at this just looks phenomenal. And 
I kind of like the idea that we have this uh, this sunken habitat and the way it's set up. Our wolves can, won't really see or interact with our guests at all, and the guests can kind of look in, with the exception of these little uh, domes and stuff like that. Which I'm shocked that I wonder if we can set it up so that it's a like one-way glass, so that our guests could look out, but the wolves, wolves wouldn't be able to see in. I wonder if that's a, a feature. I haven't really looked into that too much, but I love this view. This just. I love the way this habitat worked out and, and this is my favorite view and I've taken a few photos up from it. I've shared it in our discord and stuff like that. I love the way this looks. It looks like it belongs right in northern Canada, which is exactly where we wanted to be for this entire build. But that's it from our live tour from our new and improved Arctic Wolf habitat. Uh, of course, I do want to say thank you so much for all the support and I really appreciate it. I hope you uh, learned something from this. And if you did, leave it in the comments below. Let me know what you took away from this habitat build. Um, and thank you again so much for all the people who have commented and, you know, for all the people who subscribed. It's really helped me out and it's, it's made this channel uh, mean so much to me. And, and I look forward to supporting and and playing more Planet Z with you guys. I've also uh, started a poll. I'm thinking about playing a second game on channel. Now, I want to preface this by saying that this the second game would be more of like an, a supplemental upload. So we would we try to continue with our weekly uploads of Planet Zoo, uh, but I want to play uh, some other games and see what you guys think. So some other building games and whatnot. So feel free to head over and uh, vote for that and uh, let me know what you would, uh, what other game you would like to see. Uh, if, if you don't see any games there that you'd like, put it in the comments. Let me know uh, what other sitting builder management style games that you would like to see on the channel. Again, Planet Zoo, near and dear to my heart. I can't see myself ever putting this game down now that I've invested so much time into it. Uh, so we will continue, of course, with Planet Zoo and Ottawa Zoo. I think we're getting to a spot where we are ready to close it off and uh, I'm really excited to to finish it. We have quite a bit of work left, but uh, I have an end plan in, in mind. Uh, it's not the original plan that we had for the for the zoo, but I think that's uh, that's OK. That's normal. Uh, other than that, I just want to, again, say thank you so much. And as always, ciao for now, everybody.